Hello everyone, thank you for clicking on my channel and welcome to the journey home. My name is Catherine and I live in Nova Scotia. This is another chapter from selected chapters from a book by Alberto Villaldo on courageous dreaming, how shamans dream the world into being. And this is a chapter from the book called Consciousness, Reality and the Four Levels of Perception. Henry Miller wrote, The moment one gives close attention to anything, even a blade of grass, it becomes a mysterious, awesome, indescribably magnificent world in itself. Our human brains experience four states of consciousness. Our ordinary waking one, dreaming, dreamless sleep, and one of lucidity when we're just beginning to wake up or fall asleep. We're in one state of consciousness when we're awake, but then we slip out of it as soon as we cross the threshold to sleep. This is not so for the earth keepers who are able to retain consciousness even while dreaming and can guide their dreams in any direction they desire. These men and women have mastered the art of being awake even while asleep and they believe that most of the rest of humanity is soundly asleep even when it's wide awake. Mastering the ability to remain conscious within these four states is essential for dreaming the lives and the world we desire. In the West, we believe that the waking state is the only one in which we can experience reality, but spiritual traditions from India, Tibet, and the Americas claim that our ordinary waking state is a less than optimal one of awareness one in which we become trapped in maya or illusion or they postulate the existence of superior and more favorable states of consciousness practices including yoga meditation and shamanic journeying can lead us to experience these states and even master them after extensive training and preparation yet the behavioral science is believed until recently that out of the ordinary states of consciousness were pathological misinterpretations of reality. In fact, psychosis is often defined as someone perceiving a distorted reality, but who doesn't recognize his or her perception as a distortion. The state of waking consciousness that we most value is far from ideal. It actually causes us to get stuck in our mind and its illusion about the true nature of reality. This illusion is so powerful and pervasive that it obliterates all real perception and traps us in a fantastic mental dialogue from which few of us ever manage to extricate ourselves. This is the cultural nightmare that we're all educated into and only recognize when we begin to still the mind. I believe that ordinary individuals are asleep and caught in a dream that soon become a painful nightmare. Can you scratch somewhere else, Chloe Bird? which is the real psychosis. We don't recognize it because everyone around us asserts that everyday life constitutes reality. It's only when we begin to awaken from our cultural nightmare that we recognize we've been asleep all along. With rigorous training, we can achieve a profound vision of the inner workings of our consciousness, thus experiencing a reality that transcends our limited views of the world. This training consists of the refining of our perception which is a practice common to yoga and meditation, as well as something you'll learn about in this chapter. The lessons in this pa the pages that follow are designed to help you maintain a state of lucidity, regardless of whether you're asleep, awake, or dreaming. Have you noticed how quickly your dreams fade when you're waking up? One moment you're in an absolute real and unforgettable dreamscape, and the next you can't even recall what your dreams were about. The doorways of perception slam shut and you're confined to only one mode of awareness. You will come to understand that there are higher states of consciousness that encompass the lower ones, where you can flow easily between the dreaming and the waking realms without losing consciousness of either. All four states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, that lucid in-between state, and the dreamless sleep are involved when we practice courageous dreaming. We experience these four states during the day, yet we're mostly unaware of them. We can be asleep while seeming to be awake. We can daydream. We can be completely lucid while driving our automobile. 
even as we're entranced by the piece of music that we're listening to, and we can be sound asleep and dreaming vividly. The task is not to bring our ordinary waking consciousness into the dreaming state, but the other way around, to bring our dream consciousness into our waking state where we can perceive that life is but a dream. Each of the four states has its particular function in dreaming the world and is associated with one of four animal archetypes of the earth keepers, the eagle, hummingbird, jaguar, and serpent. Eagle is the state of dreamless sleep or stillness. Hummingbird is the dreaming state. Jaguar is that lucid state between dreaming and sleeping. And the serpent is our ordinary waking awareness. Neuroscientists understand that different regions of the brain can operate in different states of consciousness. And it's possible that we may be engaged simultaneously in all four states. Perhaps the most striking example of this is the dolphin, in which only one half of its brain sleeps at any one time, while the other half remains awake. A dolphin isn't able to sleep with its entire brain at once, because respiration isn't an automatic function for, for it as it is for us. So one half of its brain has to remain alert in order for the dolphin to continue to breathe. We rarely operate at our highest level of ability within any of our four levels of consciousness. And too often we operate at our lowest. So while Jaguar consciousness can be lucid, logical and coherent, it's most often muddled and riddled with unwanted thoughts and feelings. Einstein said that no problem can be solved at the same level that created it. So it's important to learn to raise our level of consciousness and master the skills and gifts within each state. To do so, we need to understand the four states of awareness that allow us to dream courageously and manifest that dream in the world. The better we understand the relationship between the brain and consciousness, the easier it will be to understand how these four levels of perception or consciousness work together as we operate in the world. The Conscious Mind and the Brain According to neuroscientists, the brain is the source of human consciousness. We know that the brain is capable of creating a simulated out-of-body experience when a particular region of the cerebral cortex is stimulated, or can even produce in us the sense of observing something at a distance. Researchers rarely consider the possibility that we might be perceiving that we're floating above our body or witnessing a distant event not because of an illusion conjured up by the brain, but because such incidents actually happen. The idea that phenomena, the idea that phenomena like this is the result of short circuits in our gray matter is much easier to accept. Recent studies have led to the theory that even the belief in God is a benign side effect of certain brain structures that evolved for survival reasons, an accident similar to the unintentional creation of beautiful columns after a series of gothic arches have been built. To a scientist, the idea that consciousness might have deliberately fashioned the brain structures needed to perceive itself seems, well, backward. Yet we know that the mind can strongly influence the very structures of the brain. For example, People who have suffered brain injuries resulting in the loss of motor function or speech have been able to create new neural connections through repetition of physical and cognitive exercises. Buddhist monks who've spent years meditating have brains that look different in a PET scan, a type of photo photographic of brain activity, and their brains process reality differently from those who don't meditate. Clearly, we have the power to heal and influence the physical brain using our mind, but which came first, the brain or the mind? Spiritual traditions are often at odds with science because they look at the relationship between the body, the mind, and the spirit from the opposite direction, teaching that mind or consciousness is the force that creates matter, not the other way around. According to most spiritual traditions, consciousness didn't arise out of an unintelligent primordial soup. In other words, mind did not arise out of mindless matter. Rather, spirit concocted the cosmic stew from which all life arose. Spirit fashioned an energy blueprint which then manifested a physical reality. 
There was an energy blueprint for the solar system and for our galaxy and for every creature in existence. The Greeks referred to this energetic blueprint as the Logos. In the East, it was known as Teo, and some religions have called it the world soul. Our personal energy blueprint, our soul, is the luminous energy field, LEF, that, like our DNA, carries the stories of who we are and everything that we've experienced. But instead of storing information in chemical bonds as DNA does, our luminous blueprint stores it as light and vibration. Perhaps better than anyone else, astrophysicists know that light carries information. In fact, the only knowledge we have about distant galaxies is through the light that reaches our telescopes across the vastness of space. The power cells for the light in our own energy field could be our very own DNA, which researchers have found emits light pulses at the rate of about 100 hertz, or 100 times per second. The LEF is the software or set of instructions that informs our DNA, which is the hardware, to manufacture proteins that create the body. Scientists tell us that the code for our DNA is comprised of just four molecules called bases, bases. These are these are adenine A, cytosine C, guanine G, and thymine T. While these four letters, the with these four letters, the entire poetry of creation is written. Every living thing is composed of DNA. And it is possible that DNA is the only real life form on the planet. In the same way that DNA is the code that contains information about our genetic history and instructs our cells and tissues how to replicate, our LEF also employs a code to store information about our past. Like DNA, the LEF has four symbols that make up its code, which shamans know by their animal signs of serpent, jaguar, hummingbird, and eagle. You might think of these four archetype animals as representing the four layers of your LEF. These four energy layers contain imprints that can hold, for example, the story of your father telling you as a child that you wouldn't amount to anything. This information is encoded into your luminous energy field as a holographic image. Depending on the severity of this wound, it can be imprinted on the hummingbird, jaguar, and serpent layers, that is, at the level of the soul, the mind, and the body. The level of eagle is always free of personal imprints because it is the level of spirit. The LEF is the blueprint for the body. You can heal another, or even yourself, by removing coding in the information contained by the LEF, and the person will return to health once the energy blueprint is cleared. You do this by working from the eagle level of spirit. Spirit existed before there was energy or matter. When all that existed was the great void, then it conceived of the universe and began to manifest the cosmos, like an artist working on a heavenly canvas that could be altered at will. And indigenous traditions, in indigenous traditions, such as the Australian Aborigines or the Native Americans, Spirit is inseparable from the creation. Spirit is both mother and father, child and parent. Life is the art, the planets and stars, and earth are the mandala, and the sky is the painting, even as it is the painter too. The earth keepers would agree with the ancient Greeks, who believed that true originality and creativity came not from the human mind and biochemical reactions and gray matter, but from the spirit. The Greeks held that the muses, the goddesses of inspiration, were responsible for all original concepts, while humans were limited to variations of the, on the theme. So while the muses conceived of a table as a place where people would share food communal, communally, mere humans could only manufacture a piece of the furniture and alter its basic design or function a bit. If indeed true, Originality and creativity come from a source that every one of us is connected to, but that is much larger than any of us as individuals. Then the process of dreaming the world actually begins in the realm of spirit at the level of ego, 
This is where we perceive that we're a part of the great infinite and have the power and even the mandate to co-create the universe. The four levels of consciousness. We need only dream courageously and the world will arrange itself in accordance with our vision. But dreaming requires practical action at all four levels of consciousness. You can experience peace as you sit upon a meditation cushion in your lovely garden, for instance, while someone across the street is preparing to change that. He's readying himself to come charging angrily through your gate because you set your garbage can on his lawn by mistake. This fact may not seem very important while you're in that blissful state of meditation, but at the physical level of serpent, that invasion is very real and can lead to bodily and emotional pain. Since more than one reality exists at a time, you'll have to operate in the physical world even as you also operate at a higher level of consciousness. At a, mere, at a more sublime level of hummingbird awareness, you can be residing in peace, but you still have to remain aware of your environment and watch where you leave your garbage. Dealing with such concerns instead of remaining in a higher level of consciousness and letting the garbage take care of itself might appear to be hypocrisy, as if you don't trust in the world that you're meant to be a part of. You must be mindful of your surroundings, even as you focus on creating peace. Jesus referred to our need to exist in multiple realities at once when he spoke of being in the world and not of it. Answering the question of whether to pay taxes to the Romans state to the Roman state by saying, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Mark 12, 17. Put another way, God may not require a regular influx of coins. But if you don't pay your taxes, you'll be meditating on a pillow on the sidewalk. I once had a client who had a family history of heart disease, and during a healing session, I wasn't surprised to find a dark spot in his LEF right above his heart. I explained that the doctors hadn't found any problems with his heart because the imprint in his LEF hadn't penetrated into his physical body yet, and I was able to clear the imprint. However, I warned him that he'd keep on having trouble in this area if he wasn't willing to make the lifestyle changes he needed at the level of serpent by eating a lower fat diet and exercising at the level of jaguar by finding ways to reduce his emotional stress and at the level of hummingbird by finding more meaning and satisfaction in his life. My client needed to act at all levels of consciousness in order to recover his health. Let's explore the four levels in full detail. Eagle Consciousness Eagle Consciousness is the highest level of perception. Brain researchers might say that those in this state are experiencing predominantly delta waves, where the activity of their brain is so slow and quiet that it barely moves a needle on the EEG, the machine that measures brain wave activity. Our brains produce delta waves when we enter our deepest sleep, a state in which we don't dream because we're immersed in a realm beyond words or images. This is what we consciously enter when we want to connect with the divine energy matrix, the LEF of the universe, and access its wisdom, power, and creativity. The Buddhists call this state emptiness, and the earth keepers call it the quiet place. The eagle has the ability to soar high above a valley, visually taking in miles upon miles of terrain, yet also able to zero in on a mouse on the ground, swoop down and capture it in its claws. The eagle is the symbol of the highest level of perception, where we're able to see the big picture and the details at the same time. At the level of eagle, we experience that we're part of the all-seeing and the all-knowing divine force. Eagle is the domain of spirit of creation that has yet to manifest. When we access this state, we enter the all at once, the timelessness in which everything exists as possibility and has the potential to spring forth into so-called reality. In Eagle, we can see into the far future and the distant past, knowing things we can't know when we're in an ordinary state of consciousness. Here we can immerse our awareness in the river of time and travel to where muscles have taken hold in a lake consuming the, ph the phytoplankton and causing fish to die and algae to grow rampant. That is, we recognize 
what's happening, but don't frame it as a problem. We simply perceive all that is around us and understand how nature is interacting with herself. We recognize that we're inseparable from the mussels, the fish, the water, and the algae. In the oneness, we don't see anything to be fixed as a, or eradicated since all is a part of what is. We're part of the world in all its beauty and complexity. We don't find our boundary between us, the creator, and the amazing creation. At the level of eagle, we can see what will happen in our future as a result of the life choices we've made. We see the death we're headed toward and the life we'll live as we travel along that trajectory. We don't panic or begin to plan how to change that trajectory. We simply observe, accept, and feel our oneness with the cycle of birth and death, of invention and destruction, and reinvention. In Eagle, we note that the cause of our current behavior may lie in the future, where we experience the heart attack and early death that pulls us toward it along the pathway that includes consuming a high-fat, high-sugar diet and living a sedentary lifestyle Knowing that this is our future, we can choose to retain that awareness as we return to a more embodied level of consciousness and start to feel a desire to fiddle with our portion of creation. Hummingbird Consciousness To support its extremely high metabolism, the hummingbird must consume large amounts of nectar. Some species also have to store enough food and energy to make their annual migratory journey from the northern United States and Canada to South America. The hummingbird is the symbol of the great traveler. And at the, this level of perception, we recognize that each of us has a unique journey to take. For some of us, it will be one of great suffering. For others, it will be one of searching and discovery. But we can all enjoy a voyage of exploration and deepening as we become more aware of our spiritual nature and the unique gifts that we can employ to dream a better, more beautiful world. Here we're operating at the level of the heart and soul. We're not focused on finding the hundreds of flowers we must drink from in order to survive today. Rather, we're concentrating on the journey we're going to take. We have the courage to embark on seemingly impossible 500 mile flight across the ocean we don't fear petering out somewhere over the Gulf of Mexico, worry if we've bulked up enough or stress, stress over where the next flower is to be found. We naturally navigate to each blossom and partake of its nectar, focusing our intent on taking the great flight of our destiny. The perceptual state of hummingbird is associated with the soul which is aware that spirit is residing within us. Here we step back from protesting against war and start to conceive of what peace would look like, what part we'd play in it, and how our talents would foster this peaceful world. We step back from the problem of having a child with autism and instead envision what the lives of our child and all of us, all of his or her family members, including us, might look like at their finest so that we can begin to create it. We recognize that our problems are opportunities to deepen our experience of spirit. This is the level at which intent molds and shapes reality, the place from which we access the gifts of the heart and soul, which allow us to dream courageously. This perception is associated with theta waves, the activity of the brain that occurs when we're in light sleep, dreaming, or even just fantasizing as we drive down the freeway. It's a profoundly creative state. Ideas that eluded us in our ordinary waking hours now appear to us symbolically. It's the domain in which we perceive in metaphors, and we understand why the painter chose to color one bloom in his still life white and all the others blue, without having to think through the answer. In Hummingbird, we observe that we can't sense at the level of the mind, jaguar, or the senses, serpent. We perceive perfection because we understand how different events and situations are woven together in an exquisite tapestry. For example, we see a divorce as an ending and a beginning, a source of pain and joyous freedom at the same time. Or we can watch someone die and feel profound sorrow, yet also experience joy and awe as we observe the beauty of his or her passing from this realm to the next. 
At this level, we can use visualization to direct our intent to organize the world. The imagery we create, the dream, allow, the dream we allow ourselves to paint in our mind's eye is accompanied by the certainty that it will be so, along with the delight of knowing that the vision we're creating will have a life of its own. Just as the painter approaches the canvas with an idea of what image he wants to create, but then gives in to serendipitous discovery that a very different picture is coming forth from his brush. We can enjoy the excitement of watching our dream unfold in its own way, in its own time, surprising and delighting us. Jaguar Consciousness In the Amazon, the jaguar is considered the guardian and protector of the rainforest. She is the finest hunter, striking her prey quickly and altering a situation dramatically in an instant. She has no predators and lives free of fear. She is playful and curious about her world, and she plots out her hunt to ensure success. For these reasons, shamans associate, associate the jaguar with the realm of ideas that allow us to explore, plan, and create a sudden shift in situations through changing our perspective. It's the level at which we think and feel. Here our brains also experience alpha waves, which are associated with meditation and relaxation, lucid dreaming, and the state of awareness we experience as we're just falling asleep or waking up. We figure out ways that we might make our visions come to fruition, and we adjust our plan to keep our passion burning while we inspire others. Operating from Jaguar helps us to manifest our dreams as we use our minds and emotions to carry out our intent. However, we have to be careful not to get stuck here. As Oscar Wilde said, action is the last resource of those who know not how to dream. Remember, that's, it's our mind and emotions and the unconscious actions that result from them that keep us in a nightmare populated by the stock characters of victim, bully, and rescuer. Too often we believe that our minds are so clever that we can think our way out of any problem, or we let our emotions rule and block us ourselves off from people's feelings and thoughts, or even the larger picture. We become entrenched in being right and then wonder why we have so many conflicts and problems. This is what happens when we don't let our dreams organize and inform our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Serpent Consciousness The physical level of reality is represented by the serpent who has no thoughts or emotions and who operates on pure instinct. It senses the grasshopper and gobbles it down without feeling mercy or thinking about what the insect's experience of death will be like. The serpent does what needs to be done, killing and digesting, slithering and resting, and doesn't plan for a journey or hunt. In this physical realm, everything is exactly as it seems to be. A stone is a stone, a threat is a threat, a meal is a meal. There is no thought, no emotion, no metaphor generated in the realm of the soul. Everything is instinctual. Serpent can be a very helpful level of consciousness because our instincts can guide us well. When we're turned into our instincts, operating with the keen awareness of the physical world as the serpent does, we can smell danger and opportunity, identify trust or fear in another, and respond accordingly. If we don't let our minds talk ourselves out of it, our intuition can help us tremendously in assessing a situation and doing what needs to be done spontane spontaneously. Unfortunately, for many of us in the West, our instincts have become flawed, we trust the wrong people and push away the ones who genuinely care about us. A friend of mine, for instance, had such flawed instincts that if there was a single psychopath at a party, she'd be irresistibly attracted to him. Within moments of meeting, they'd be gazing into each other's eyes, lost in love. And two weeks later, I'd be hearing about how Mr. Perfect was a perfect jerk. When we're stuck at the level of serpent, there's no dream to organize our reality. Nor is there even a story to make sense of our feelings. They're simply action. When a stranger shows up unexpectedly in our yard, we perceive him as a threat and act out of pure instinct. Of course, to be a part of society, we have to be able to check such behavior. After all, we're expected to use common sense rather than automatically striking out at anyone 
who happens to wander in onto our property. Luckily, at Jaguar, we pass laws to regulate people's behavior and keep the peace. Organizing from the top. The four levels of consciousness can be thought of as energy bodies of different frequencies, but the lightest, most quickly vibrating one enveloping and organizing the denser ones like Russian nesting dolls, spirit's body is the matrix of the universe itself. Sorry, guys. Which envelops the individual life like the individual like a mother embracing her child. This is the matrix of energy associated with eagle perception. The soul is the LEF, a vibrating field of light that acts as a blueprint for our thoughts, feelings, and physical body. The LEF surrounds our mental or emotional body, and in the center of all of these is the dense energy of the physical body. Spirit fashions the soul, which fashions the mind and emotions, and personality, which mold the body in their own image. The body can't understand how all of this fits together, and the mind boggles at the thought that it isn't in charge of all these levels of reality. Each of the energy bodies is inclusive, inclusive of the ones within it, yet can't be described by them. Thus, the soul contains the mind and body, but can't be explained by them. And at Hummingbird, we're aware of all that we know at Jaguar and Serpent. We can compare these to the four levels of organization in the physical body, those of cells, tissues, organs, and creatures. The cells of an eagle can came together first into tissues and then formed organs. Yet the cells in the stomach, the tissues in the stomach walls, and even the stomach itself know nothing about hunting. They just play their roles in the digestive process. Only the eagle understands the hunt for food, while each of the systems operates at its own level with perfection. None of the lower levels can exist if the bird doesn't hunt and eat. The eagle can't dis be described by its cells, tissues, or organs, yet it contains all of these. The superior levels include the ones below them but can't be defined by them. The level of consciousness must be raised to comprehend the hunt. Comprehend the hunt. All four bodies of consciousness have a particular kind of awareness. At the physical level, we're concerned with the four Fs, feeding, fornicating, fighting, and fleeing. Here, our driving force is the unconscious thought of, I kill, screw, eat, run, therefore, I am. At the level of mind, we're driven by the thought of, I think, therefore, I am. The soul is driven by understanding that I am, therefore, I am. This is the level at which we become aware of the divine within us and around us. Yahweh, the Hebrew word for God, essentially means I am what I am. It's a state of being and awareness that takes us above the realm of mere thoughts, feelings, and words to one in which poetry, metaphor, and art can capture what we experience. At the level of ego, there is no I whatsoever, no individual consciousness. There is only spirit. It is what the Persian poet Rumi referred to when he said, I have ceased to exist. Only you are here. To dream courageously, we enter eagle, the realm of endless creativity and true originality. Then return to the consciousness of Hummingbird to marshal the tremendous force of our intent. We begin dreaming from this level of the soul where poetry, metaphor, and vision are our palette and open ourselves to however that dream unfolds. Using the consciousness available to us at Jaguar, we find ourselves thinking and feeling in alignment with our dream, and at Serpent, we're compelled to act in accordance as well. At each of these levels, we're able to access a different type of courage that can help us dream into being the lives we long to experience, just as the four levels of consciousness are all necessary for engaging the world creatively. Four types of courage make it possible for us to act in ways that truly make a difference. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you join us again.
Everything that you want to find out about the channel and website is in the description below. God bless you all. Bye for now.